So yeah, getting this thing started, how would you describe what it is exactly that you do? Or maybe what is it that you talk about on your channel? Simple, mindful, and connected. Yeah. I mean, I'm talking about self-realization, right? And self-realization to me means that you have had this discovery, this inner discovery that you are it, that you are whole, that you are complete, you are omnipresent, you are unlimited being, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So I had this experience in, I want to say April of, or March of uh, 2023. And um, long story short, I had been on this journey for many, many years, almost 20 years of of a seeking journey, right? Yeah. Uh, Where I would, um, you know, be looking for things outside of myself to fill the inner void like Mm -hmm. many people do. Um, So I started out with meditation. Uh, Meditation was my go-to for a long time. Had some pretty awesome mystical experiences through meditation. And from meditation, it led me into, you know, kind of exploring the modalities of energy healing. So I got into energy healing, um, you know, everything from Reiki to tuning forks. Mm -hmm. Uh, I considered myself a uh, woo-woo woman, you know, everything woo-woo. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I even had a podcast um, for a while called the Woo-Woo Wonder Hour. <laughs> and um, so I was really invested in this uh, human being spiritual Krista that I had created. So essentially what had happened was, um, you know, not only did I have my my role that I played at home as just the normal human being, Krista, but I also had this, you know, very spiritual woo-woo woman with the crazy hair and, you know, talks about angels and Hmm. has mystical experiences and all that stuff. And so what would happen in that journey is, you know, it would, it would be good. And like, I would be, you know, working my way up um, consciousness wise. And then all of a sudden I felt like I was taking a few steps back. So it's kind of like the, you got it and then you lose it. Mm -hmm. And so that process really started from the beginning with meditation. You would feel good and then you would feel off or you would feel like I've regressed in some way or, Oh, I, I thought that I had already released that. I had already let that go. So, um, long story short, fast forward to, um, March of 2023, uh, you know, my husband before that had been telling me about the great. And in that book, he Wait, mentioned, what was it? Sorry, you kind of broke up. He was telling you about what the book, the greatest secret. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. By Rhonda Byrne. Mm-hmm. And so he was reading this book and in her book, she mentioned several times David Bingham. And David Bingham is a spiritual guide. He focuses on non-duality, right? And so um, he was like, Krista, you, you got to look up this guy. You're going to love this guy. And so, you know, I, it took me a while because the human being Krista is a little stubborn, say, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I started listening to him and, you know, I just couldn't stop. There was something in his words that was resonating at such a deep and profound level Mm. that I knew there was something there. Mm. And I felt like I was just almost there. But then I, you know, I would be like, oh, no, I don't know. All these experiences I've had, I, I don't know if I can go to this level. And so uh, my dad actually passed and um, I was at his bedside when he was passing. And this was in this time that I was listening to the David Bingham talks. And I was kind of like letting this just wash over me, this knowingness of, you know, what we all are. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was with my dad in the last few moments that he passed. And, you know, I had been crying. It was me and my mother. And, um, you know, we we were both crying. 
and I was holding his hand. And, you know, when you cry so much that you have like this terrible headache and you feel like you're going to throw up. I don't know if you've ever felt that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, so all of a sudden this this presence and this peace, it just washes all over me. It's like an energy that enters in the room and it just it's an energy that's connected at all levels to you, him, everything. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's this piece. And those were the, I felt this energy, the moments before he passed. And then when he did pass, there was this innate knowing that there is no separation between him and me, that everything is all connected. And that, you know, that love that we have for someone, it doesn't leave. It stays with you. It's it's this constant feeling of interconnectedness. That's the best that I could explain it. Yeah. And so I went through that process and I was just, you know, in shock of my dad's death. But I did not have any grief, not very much grief for his death. And, uh, you know, that was very shocking to a lot of people around me, given that I had lost my dad, but I felt such a connection with him and a knowingness that we're all connected and there's only the one, right? Mm -hmm. And so it, with that, uh, that experience and also the teachings of David Bingham, there was just this moment. I don't know when it exactly was, but it was like, I get it. Mm. I get that you're already whole. You're already complete. There are no levels of consciousness. You are the divine unlimited omnipresent being and that there is no separate self. So this profound knowing, um, it's been like this process of what I call integration, but really there is no integration. We're already all self-realized, right? Where I've been dropping away these big chunks of my ego. And one of those big chunks, the first one to go was the woo-woo woman, Krista. <laughs> <laughs> mm. um, mm -hmm. So anyways, I, I've been... I have started to post on my channel just because I felt inspired only when I did feel inspired to talk mm -hmm. about this stuff. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's been beautiful to be part of a community of many people who feel the same thing that I'm feeling and that I know. Powerful stuff. Wow. So how would you describe what changed in maybe the way that you speak about this stuff? You know, no more energies, no more crystals, no more woo-woo, but now you're speaking about self-realization, true spirituality, if you even want to call it that. How would you describe the difference between how you saw yourself before March of last year and then now? Or maybe yeah. how would you see from your, how you see yourself, how you speak about that, you know? Yeah. So the, we'll just call the, the woo woo woman, Krista, yeah. right. Was very mystical, um, was into crystals, was into, you know, different techniques to obtain something. She was always becoming something. Yeah. I guess you. the old mm -hmm. Krista, right. She was, on this level of consciousness and she was working her way up to the highest level of achievement, but mm. she knew in her heart that she probably wouldn't achieve it in this lifetime. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. She may need to be born several millions of years in order to be self-realized. And the old Krista would look at non-duality. And I know that non-duality has come across my path a few times and I would look at it. And I would read it and be like, I don't get this. I, I mean, this is not for me. Uh -huh. <laughs> so I do think there was a, a piece of time in there. Uh, so the the new Krista um, all, is a nobody. <laughs> mm. She just kind of lives her life in what uh, what I would call like beingness. 
and lets life unfold um, without any preferences. So Mm. in the past, I would try to control my life and to shape my life. And I would have goals and aspirations for the future. There no longer are those. There is only just being. And what has happened out of that beingness is that connection to the eternal now, kind of like, oh, that's what Eckhart Tolle was talking about when he would say the eternal now. I get it, like living completely in the present with not identifying with your mind, not identifying with your body or your emotions, just letting life flow. Mm -hmm. Mm. Now, there is an aspect of this where the ego loves to to rear its head and you know bring up all these negative thoughts or emotions or even positive thoughts or positive emotions but there is a watching and an awareness around the ego that was never there before uh-huh. so it's like you see the ego but to use david bingham's uh, term, uh, terminology he says I don't subscribe to it it's like an email that comes in and says all right let's subscribe to um, the I need to be uh, I need people to like me email right yeah and usually Krista would click on that and you know there would be this invitation and she would feel all these negative things and say oh people don't like me oh you know da 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 but now I see the email, the awareness sees the email and you just delete, move to the trash if you don't want to experience that. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. It's very freeing, huh? It is. I mean, it, it felt like when this all happened, it felt like this huge energetic weight was just lifted off Mm. because All of us feel like, and I feel like I can say this with confidence. I think we all suffer. We all want to be happy. We all want to um, experience joy and high frequencies in life. And we're on like this, this hamster wheel. Yeah. And you're never going to get off of the wheel. And Mm -hmm. so when you know that there is no such wheel and that you are everything, and there is no cage. It's like, wow. Yeah. You know? <laughs> the only way to get off the wheel and to break out the cage is to realize that there is no wheel and there is no cage. Boom. Yeah. yeah. That's and, it. And we're creating this false wheel for ourselves and this false cage for ourselves out of false ideals. That's exactly. the irony. <laughs> <sighs> powerful stuff. Yeah, that's powerful stuff. Wow. So, I mean, I guess now what, you know, once you get that message, now that you're free per se, now that you don't have to subscribe to the ego's games, uh, how do you chop wood and carry water? Is it any different? You know, what is the difference in your lifestyle? Do you speak differently, see people differently? Like, Now what? You know, how would you answer that question? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, the ego is the one that says the now what, right? Mm -hmm. So what I aspire to do every day is just to rest in beingness and to bring my full presence to every situation, every person, every being that I encounter. Yeah. And so... I really don't have any goals. I mean, probably I do belong in some, you know, uh, spiritual community like Ananda or something. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I mean, that sounds nice to me to go live out in the woods with, uh, you know, folks that are more conscientious or whatever. But I think that we're all meant to be where we are in this present moment for a reason, right? So you have to trust that and just see what, where life takes you, you know? And there's, um, there's a lot of adventure in that. There's a lot of excitement and joy and gratitude for where you are and, you know, whatever the divine being wants to unfold for you in the future. Yeah. 
I say that also, you know, interacting with my family, my friends, I feel an immense amount of love towards all people. It doesn't matter who I interact with. It can be a stranger. It can be my, my children. It can be, you know, whoever, right? There is this love that if I, you know, if I kind of like harness it, it just flows out through you yeah. because there is an understanding that there is no separate self. And why wouldn't you love that person for who they are yeah. and not try to change anyone? Amen to that. I think, go ahead, Gary. I was going to say amen to that. I yeah. feel it's like you almost have to love at a certain yeah. point. Uh, once you see it, it's like you have to, you have to, you don't have to love. But like you said, why would you not? Yeah. Mm. Mm hmm. Would you say that is associated with this divine being that you mentioned? Is just this divine being of just love? Just, you know, un, uh, yeah. Yeah. Just love. I right? think the divine being in all of us is infinite love, infinite peace, infinite joy. Yep. It's all of the above all at once. Mm. And, you know, when you kind of tap into that, your natural consciousness, we'll just say that we all are. It opens the door to living in higher frequencies of your life experience, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just think if, you know, you went to the grocery store or whatever, and you allowed yourself to just feel love for every being. Mm -hmm. And just you emitting that frequency, it changes the experiences that come into, you know, your life. And it changes the world around you with this higher frequency of love, unconditional love. Yeah. Um, because everybody, you know, if you look at just people, right, people want to be seen at the and accepted at their deepest level, right? Be at loved. their soul level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the truth. We all yeah. want to be loved. <sighs> and then I guess it comes to a point we all just want to love too. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, man. That's what it's all about. Damn, we're getting right into this thing. But that that <laughs> really is what it's all about. Yeah. And there is something about that love that transcends all of our preferences, all of our pleasures and aversions, all of our comings and goings of the bodily vessel, life and death altogether. That love that isn't even love how we describe it in our language, in our world, in our paradigm. It's way past that. It transcends everything. All of our humanly drama, that love is supreme. And like I said, the words aren't doing it justice, but once you feel it, man, it's like you feel it. Yeah. It's like, this is it. This is it. Whatever this feeling, this essence, this energy, this is it. This is the higher vibes that they talk about that the woo woo woman was probably chasing. Yeah, the <laughs> woo woo woman love. didn't understand unconditional love. She mm. wanted to change people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's not really unconditional love. That's yeah. something else. <sighs> powerful stuff that that is the truth yeah i don't even know where to go from here speechless already <laughs> speechless already at that well uh, you know it kind of reminds me of the best thing that i can equate it to is you probably heard of like this christ consciousness right yeah. and the spiritual community mm -hmm. i think that it's it's basically that right you know mm -hmm. how do you embody christ in this human body, right? The embody, the energy, the the unconditional love. And, you know, yeah. if you look at it from a non-duality point of view, that is what you, that mm -hmm. is your natural state. Yeah. Would you say that's what all the sages, all the religions, all the belief systems are really getting at is to dwell in this natural state of compassion and unconditional love toward each other? I do think so. I think that, you know, there's 
I think that like Christianity speaks uh, to compassion and unconditional love. I think, for example, Buddhism is more on the frequency of like peace and, and beingness. So I think that, you know, you could really look at every religion and get it down to its roots. And, and I'll, you know, there's probably going to be some people that'll hate me for this, but it's got no non-dual roots mm -hmm. when you go down to them. Right. Mm -hmm. And each one kind of can take different aspects of the divine being and express it at its roots. Yeah. Yeah. Amen to that. Uh, the truth is one and the wise call it by many names. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But trying to explain this to people, you know, that just aren't ready to, to receive it. Um, you know, I, I have had, I've had to learn that, you know, the wise man does not speak unless they're asked mm. to give input on yeah. some things. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So because people will think you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yeah. I've, that's okay. They can think yeah. I'm crazy. <laughs> they thought Jesus was crazy too. Yep. All of all the saints probably think they're crazy. But it's not not crazy. And you know what? The beautiful part is that we can come on here and connect with each other and realize that we're not crazy together. Exactly. <laughs> or maybe we're just crazy together. I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. But yeah, it's a beautiful time to be able to connect with uh, others that are on this wavelength and knowing what's really going on in the world, you know, as opposed to turning on Fox News and TikTok and the drama, the story. That's all. That's part of it. That's part of the show of Leela. That's, you know, you can just you can just kind of be passerby to that as well. Just kind of witness that. That's, you know, that's cool. But that's not really what it's all about, man. That's like what it's really about is what we're talking about now. It's the love and connecting with each other on this wavelength and actually realizing it, you know, past the humanly drama. So it's cool that we can do that. And ta I tap into your point of view on that and tap into mine. And then we get other people that are in the comments. We've got a community around that. And, you know, it's just a beautiful time to be alive and culminate this kind of energy and uh, do this from our living rooms as well. You know, <laughs> yeah, it's cool that we can do this. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I found that you know, the posting on YouTube when I feel inspired has really helped because a lot of times I'll find that, you know, I'll post on a particular video. There will be comments that deepen my understanding. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah. so I think that, you know, it's almost like the divine being is pulling together these people energetically to, you know, put all the little pieces together so that the understanding deepens. Yeah. Um, because I don't know if you felt this way, Gary, but you know, on this path of non-duality, this pathless path, we'll say, cause it's mm -hmm. not a path. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I felt like it just, it gets deeper, right. And the, the understanding deepens, but there's also a knowing that, you know, the communities help each other. Mm. And I think the communities are, you know, they're, they're important aspect to, you know, energetically being drawn to a person that has a specific message that resonates with your frequency. And, you know, the person posting it, they can deepen from the comments and the connection to those people. So I found it to be a, a wonderful experience, you know, to have the, the YouTube channel so far. Yeah. I mean, there are some people that you know, say some really mean things yeah. and uh, you just don't subscribe. You just delete those comments. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <That easy. laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. And on that point, um, I do feel as though the understanding does constantly deepen every day that goes by, every conversation that I have, every comment that I read, positive comments at least. Well, even the negative ones, I guess, could make it the understanding deeper. But my point is, it's like, that's the beauty of it. It's kind of like the journey never ends, you know? It's this free fall that doesn't really have anywhere to fall to. It's this, like you said, a pathless path. It's a path to nowhere, essentially, but that's the beauty of it, realizing Exactly. That. 
it's there's liberation in that there's there is no ending to this journey of non-duality that isn't really even a journey anywhere you know it's just it's a paradox but that's the beauty of it you understand and it's it's like knowing that you never understand this whole thing you never figure it out per se but yet never giving up the path to understanding like the understanding and the deepening will always will always come through like it will always be a thing for me like every day yeah it's it's like brand new every moment is brand new yeah and that's the beauty but there's never going to be a moment where i arrive per se it's uh, uh you know what i'm saying it's, it's hard to explain it's this simultaneous essence of being and becoming but never truly becoming at a certain point and that is true freedom for all of us that that is the truth for all of us but i feel as though the dualistic mind we're conditioned into um it traps us at like uh points of i have to become this i have to yeah. become that i have to do this look this certain way like end points and when you get to the end point you finally become this so-called character that you wanted to become you realize that's not it you know you realize like we, we have we put up a show our whole life of trying to get somewhere be somebody do something and then we either get it or we don't and we fall short every time but living in this essence that we talked about between being and becoming no preferences and an unconditionality to life like it's just a true it really is true freedom it's sort of like whatever happens happens and that's so beautiful like what hey let jesus take the wheel you know and just kind of exactly let's just take your hand off the wheel yeah yeah because that's the only way to really go about it right because we're really not in control you can try to control it all you want try to play this character however you want you can we can try but really nobody's in control here <laughs> nobody's in control <laughs> so just stop trying to control this whole thing uh i don't know where i was going what the point of that uh, i mean i was. i totally I, I follow you friend i think yeah. you know this pathless path and you said it a couple of times i think it's it's freedom yeah. right because what the ego does is the ego puts you in a box mm -hmm. and then you have these different roles, right? And you play these different roles and you have your little your little ego and you say, that is me, right? And you say, and, and that ego is tied to beliefs. And so whatever you believe becomes your reality mm -hmm. and what you're identified with. So what we're talking about here is dropping away the beliefs and the ego identification, although the ego will always be there to, to some extent, right? Like I'm a mother, I'm always going to be a mother, right? Mm -hmm. There's, there's that human being aspect of Krista that has a, a specific ego and she likes this and she doesn't like this, but she, you know, you can drop away the heaviness of the ego. Yeah. And what that, reveal and, and just like and what that reveals is a more free life more maybe the word is spacious yeah. energetically mm -hmm. because i think that you know working with people over the years and energy healing and all of that what people they you know they would come to you and they would be like just release all this from me and then you would, you know, you do your little thing and you put your hands over them and then you, you'd you work through the trauma or the past life or whatever, right? And then that would come out and they say, okay, I feel lighter. And then a month later, oh, I've got this, you know? And so what we're talking about is there's no need for any of that. You just drop away things in the present moment because you bring it all back to you are it. Yeah. You don't need to release or become anything. Yeah. Mm hmm Yeah. And like you said, the ego still plays its games. The show of the ego still goes on. 
yet there's always that subtle knowing that you are it. And that's so beautiful. Always, no matter what happens, all of our ups and downs of life, you can kind of yeah. just take a step back. It's not really a step back. It's a metaphor, obviously. But there is this like, with that knowing, that understanding of really what's going on here, per se. Yeah, you can kind of handle anything. It's like whatever happens, happens, like I said. And um, yeah, do you feel as though from that vantage point, yeah, you don't subscribe to the show of the ego, but also do you feel as though the ego is utilized in a different manner? There is a different will or different intention that comes about from this vantage point of infinite love? Like, do you see yourself, maybe the ego as a tool rather than the master before? It's kind of like the servant now? Yeah, I actually do resonate with that deeply. You yeah. know, I, I think that with this infinite love that you feel, it's almost like you want to live a life of service. Yeah. You want to... You know, although there is no separation from me to you, right? There, There is this um, inspiration, I'll call it, to live a life of service and to help others to feel this freedom. Mm -hmm. Because everyone is trapped. Yeah. And the more of us although there are no separate us, right? But we are in these human bodies. The more that wake up to this truth, the more higher frequencies of our life experiences worldwide will we, you know, manifest into mm -hmm. our reality. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Um. Now, do you recommend any sort of general modalities or practices to allow this in one's life, like meditation, self-inquiry, just simply being still? Like somebody, hypothetically, that is very curious about what we're talking about, but maybe they don't have the understanding, very curious, um, their door is open. Yeah. How do we start, you know? Where is this? Where does this uh, where does this start for somebody in their life? I don't know your story, Gary, but you <laughs> know my story kind of started with meditation, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Same. So I tend to want to say that self inquiry meditation would be a good place to start. And uh, one of the guys that you talked to, um, I think it was last week. His name is Daniel. He, does, he has the Samadhi Center in mm -hmm. Canada. Yeah, he's awesome. He is awesome. Mm -hmm. And his meditations are awesome yeah. with self-inquiry. And what he does is, you know, he just does pointing. And he sits in silence and he will point you to the truth. And for each of us, uh, you know, I think that that realization comes out in a very unique way. I said this in one of my videos, and I don't know exactly where it came from or where I heard it from, but uh, I I feel like, you know, some people are like wet wood. They require time to dry out, to, you know, to to be ready to condition themselves to be ready for this truth. Mm -hmm. And then some people are like dry wood. They just hear it and then they just ignite and they know that that's the fire. It boom. Yeah. My journey was wet wood. Mm -hmm. I came with, you know, a lot of, you know, childhood trauma and a lot of just a lot of blockages. Right. And it took me time to work through those in order to be ready at, at my perfect time to be able to receive this truth. So I don't know if, you know, 20 years ago, if I would have started with self-inquiry, that it would have resonated. 
I mean, I, I'd like to know your thoughts on, on this topic too. Mm. Um, I ask that question to pretty much everybody. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and usually we come to the conclusion that it's hard to generalize, even though I try to ask somebody to generalize. It's usually it's hard to generalize because, like you said, some of us are wet wood, some of us are dry wood. We all have our own trauma and we all have our own karma. Um, so it is hard to say, although I think there is a correlation between the importance of meditation between all of us to just simply be still and know. A wise man once said that to be still yeah, and know. Yeah, that's a good one. Right? To just step back from the drama of all the goings on of our life and the, the drama is very thick take time to just simply breathe i think that's a good starting point maybe not for everybody but i think a vast majority of us could benefit from a regular meditation practice so oh, yeah yeah in a simple answer i agree meditation i think is a starting point for a lot of us yeah because you know meditation opens you up to that inner stillness Yep. And it helps you to quiet the mind, mm -hmm. like to train or what, you know, the neuro pathways or whatever through meditation or mindfulness, you're training the brain to kind of like still and quiet and go into those alpha states yeah. in your brain. Mm -hmm. And so once you're able to kind of work through that, that busy mind, and you get quieter, then you feel something and you can kind of say, ah, there's something there, you yep. know? Mm -hmm. And then you want to pick at it. <laughs> and as you pick at it, you're like, oh my gosh. I mean, there's this whole, this whole inner world that mm -hmm. no one really talks about. Although people are talking about it now, here we are. And yeah, there's right. all these different people talking about it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm a big fan of mindfulness as well. I mean, I have, I'm a certified mindfulness and uh, meditation teacher from my, my past life, woo woo Krista. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, that was always my go-to for people, but I will say that, you know, working with people over the years, not everybody can sit cross-legged and, you know, just like sit with themselves. Yeah. So you got to find something that you love, whether that's walking on the beach or playing tennis, that just puts you in that present moment so that you can quiet your mind and just, you know, like just be there, be present. Yep. Yeah, it's really that simple. Meditation has a lot of shapes and sizes and different ways that you know your life can be a meditation but i think it all really has to do with slowing down and engrossing one truly in the present moment and not in the mind stuff out of thinking about your past like either the future or the past right that's usually how the ego and the mind is oriented but to just simply be here in the present moment in turn turn the witness onto the witness that might yeah. be a, the next step in that but truly that's really what it comes down to is to turn outward to inward i think that is the process for all of us to be able to attain this divine being to see this divine being that we are so just be still and know that you are god it's that simple um definitely easier said than done that's for sure but yeah i don't know i think that's the essence of it yeah, and I would also say that, you know, for folks that are out there, the seekers, you know, you really need to, uh, you know, look for those teachers that their message resonates with you mm -hmm. at a deep level and prove it out in your own life, right? So just don't take what somebody says to you yeah. to be like the word of God or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, you got, I mean, this is at least what I, I feel works is that, okay, yes, that resonates. Let me try to prove it. Let me try yeah. to implement that in my life or allow that in my life and see what that does. Mm. Does that bring me to 
a higher frequency of experiences or what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Find people that you resonate with. There's a wonderful amount of teachers online. Um, it's great that we have that. Sometimes you do have to sift through a little of the woo woo, but that's okay. That's part of the journey. Find what you resonate with in somebody's words, because I don't know about you, but when I first started to hear Dharma or truth or whatever you want to call it, when somebody has this understanding and they convey it out, yeah, something just sounds different. The resonance in their words sound different. They're using the same language that I've heard, the same words that I've heard, but it's just the way that they use it. And I, I just wanted to listen. I was like, I've never heard anything like this before. Um, yeah. True Dharma from a, somebody that truly understands something very special. So see if you can find that um, in somebody. And yes, like you said, translate that into your own life too. Don't take anybody else's word for it. Truly translate that back into oneself. That's really what it comes down to. All teachings, whether it's in a book, a talk, podcast, whatever it is, all teachings I think are ultimately a remembrance for us to come back to us, for you to go back to you. Yeah. And if, if that's not it, if it's not doing that for you, then I say run the other way. <laughs> if the teacher's like, you need me, you got to pay a certain amount of money to get this teaching, blah, blah, whatever, you know, behind some kind of paywall, which is okay. That's okay. I know people charge for the services, but if they're saying you ultimately need them, for the so-called peace, enlightenment, happiness, love, God, realization, run the other way because you really don't. That's the thing. You really don't. All of it's just guidance and all of it is just a remembrance for you to go back to you. So yes. I think that's that's huge, right? You mm -hmm. are the guru. That's it. You are your own best guru. Mm -hmm. And really what we're playing is an energy game, right? Mm -hmm. So in the energy game, when you're looking for like a resonance on, you know, what would be your next step in this journey, right? It's, it's about finding that frequency match. I think that what we're kind of just kind of saying is like, when you align to a teacher, right? To me, that's like a frequency match. Yeah. That those it's either complimenting or it's a match. And, you know, it's just all part of this big energy game that, we're playing here on earth. Amen to that. Like attracts like. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Find your frequency. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah. Well, thankfully you're putting out the frequency that you're putting out. And I think a lot of people will resonate and do resonate. I resonate at least with your frequency. You just, like I said, in the beginning, have a very warm and bright spirit about you, Krista, and very, simple too there's something very simple to your words and i think that what's that's what makes a good teacher or guide i feel maybe because i'm simple-minded but i think when one can take these ideas that seem very grandiose seem sort of lofty and make it simple relatable and practical for everybody or at least you know whoever resonates whoever is resonating at that frequency um i think that's what's important simplicity is very important in this whole thing because the the thing is the beauty of it is it is quite simple it's almost so simple that it's hidden in plain sight for us yeah um, so yeah keep it simple keep it simple y'all um i don't have anything else to say i think that's a good note to wrap this thing up at i i wish you all the best krista i please keep doing your thing like i said you have uh something about you i've talked i've talked to I don't know, over 200 people at this point. And uh, at the end of the day, we're all saying the same stuff, just in a different flavor. But the flavor that you got, like I said, I think a lot of people will relate to and resonate with. So please keep doing your thing. Seriously. Thank you, friend. And it was my pleasure. And we'll talk soon. For sure. Um, all right. Do you have anything else you want to say? You just want to keep it at that? No, I think that, you know, like you said, Gary, just keep it simple. You know, Lester Levinson says there's the kiss, K-I-S-S. -S. Keep it simple, sweetheart. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were gonna say stupid. Yeah. Yeah, sweetheart, I like that. That's a lot better. <laughs> no, we're we're the loving energy, remember? So <laughs> that's a better alternative. 
Well, yep, yeah, I like that. The kiss of simplicity. Thank you, Krista. <laughs> um, that's it. Keep on keeping on. Peace and love to you, and peace and love yep. to anybody that listening this long. Take care.